All right, so we're on to logs. Um, in your do now, if there was a review over exponentials, making sure we remember the format and what an exponential looks like, um, the behaviors of the exponential, uh, because logs is the inverse of an exponential, which is what we're leading into. And so in order to understand logs, you also need to have a foundation of exponentials, okay? So we will be reviewing that. Your do nows for the week are exponential-based do nows. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right, here we go. Uh, for log expressions, so we're going to simply start with log expressions. And there are skills and objectives that we're trying to achieve. Starting off with, these are our basic properties of logarithms, okay? So log base B, log base, oh, that's not my pen. All right, so log base B of one equals zero. So that means any, whatever the base is, log base B of one is gonna always be zero. Okay, the other one, log base B of B is gonna equal one. Log base B to any power is going to be that power. Uh, B to the log base B is going to be whatever your, I can't remember what that thing is called, the number on the side, your argument. Your argument is. Um, and then natural log. Natural logs work exactly the same. The only difference is that instead of using logs and bases, it's using natural log, which is your E. Um, your base is E, okay? It's the same exact statement, all right? So these are gonna be the rules that we follow. We touched on these rules briefly in algebra two, um, and now we're just gonna reiterate them and dive a little deeper, okay? So first up, if I had log base two, eight of eight equals three, why is that? Well, there we go. The cube root of eight is two, or two to the third, two. I swear I wrote a two and a three, it's there. I don't know why it's not appearing. Yes, so your base of your log becomes the base of your exponential. Guys, I wrote it. The answer, what goes there? All right, let's try it again. So we have a pen. See, told y'all I was writing it. Oh. <laughs> I told y'all I was writing it. I knew I was. Okay, the base of the log becomes the base of the exponential. The argument of the log becomes your solution. The solution of the log becomes your, your exponent. Okay, For, yes. So it's not about key roots, it's about power. So you do need to write it as a power rule, as an exponential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's true. That's just because if it's two to the third power equals eight, then the cube root of eight has to be two. Um, but converting between log expressions and um, exponential expressions, this is the rule that you're following. Okay, so again, the base is going to be the same. Your argument is going to become your solution. Your solution becomes your power. Are you with me? So following that same thing here, we have log base three of the cube root of three equals one half. So how would I translate that? There we go. Three to the one half equals the square root of three. So when I'm taking the half power of something, that means I'm taking the square root of it. Okay, let's keep going. So here we have log base five of one um, of one twenty fifth equals negative two. What does that look like? Five negative two equals one twenty fifth. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so negative powers mean that they're they go in the denominator. They're products in the denominator, right? All right. Log base ten of one. When there is no log base present, what is the base? 10. When, um, when there's no base present, that means there is an invisible 10. So the base of my exponential is going to be 10. So it's 10 to the 10 to the 1 equals 10. That's true, right? So wait, what is that called? <laughs> this is called your common log. 
So when there isn't a base present, that means it's 10. Wait, I'll do it. Oh, I'm not Yeah, algebra two, this is our common log. Then our base is six, yes. So notice here, every time we had a base, had a base, had a base, but this one we did not. And that's because this is common log. And when you have common log, that means your base is 10 and you don't have to write it. It's given. Just like when you take the square root, your index is two, right? We don't write the two on the outside. We know that it's just square root. No, it could be anything. What happens, it's just a 10 is always gonna be there if you don't see it. I'm not. So just like we did all of these. If I had log base six, uh, if you had log of six, you'd have to put X because you don't know what that equals. So it'll be 10 to the X equals six. Your log base, when there's not a base there, is always 10. It's called common log. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. So like if this had been, if this had been log 100 equals two, that's because 10 squared equals 100. Yeah. All right, now keep going. So this one, we have um, six to the log base six of 11 equals 11. And that's because they're gonna end up doing what? They're gonna end up canceling each other out, the law. If the base of my exponent and the base of my log are the same, they're gonna cancel each other out. So the answer is just 11, okay? And the reason being is that these are equivalent statements. There's gonna come out to be the same thing, however you write it, but because ultimately you're gonna have log base six of 11 equals log base six of 11 on both sides, okay? And we're going to explain why a little bit more, but that's because you're going to take the log base six of both sides, and then there's going to be equal statements. But when it's simplified, it just all becomes 11. So when you take the log, when the base of your exponent and the base of your log are the same, the answer is the argument. They're inverse operations of each other. So it's like if I'm adding and subtracting the same number, what ends up happening? They cancel each other out, right? But in this case, it doesn't cancel out. It just frees the argument. If they're different, then you have to work the problem differently. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go the other way. So we're going to write the exponentials as logs. Okay. So now we're going the reverse. So remember the base. The base of my exponential is going to be the base of my log. So it's going to be log base four. The answer is now going to be my argument. And the power is going to be my solution. I don't know why. We will do applications at the end. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you a moment and I want you to do B, C, and D to the best of your ability at your table. If you don't feel confident answer, do it in pencil so that when we go over it, you can correct it. Okay. But I want you to try. The base is the same. Your argument and solution split. Your base is the same. Your argument and solution split. Y'all kind of remember this from algebra test a little bit? Okay. If not, I'm hoping we're still not terrible. But I promise you this test because we're about to start it again. Now that you. Did you? No, 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 no. If I can do it, y'all can do it. Yes. Check with your table mates. All right. 
Are you ready to go over it? Yeah. All right. So on B, what do I get? Perfect. <laughs> 729. Okay. 729. Okay. My bad. My bad. All right. What do we get on C? Perfect. Okay. Y'all are saying it. Log. It's log base 64 of 8 okay. equals 1 half. All right. How do we feel about going between the two? Log exponent, exponent to log. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You do have a quiz on Friday over two over over Thursday two C point one. You guys won't be here. I remember. All right, um, all right. Where are we at? So it says here we have our logs. So this is where you're going to practice and go. So we did the first ones together. Now it's your turn to do logs to exponents by yourself. So looking back at the very first ones we did, example number one. Yes. So what we did on example one, remember the base of the log is the base of the exponent, and your argument is to look to split. Oh, we're doing the same thing again? You're going the other way. Oh, oh like, like we did on number one. Yep, like we did on example one. The point is a good thing. It's like the same one every day. You just play different songs. How do we like that? I guess I did it all right. All right. Five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, twenty-thirteen, twenty-fourteen, twenty-fifteen, I'm not ever going to The real call or fake call? Hang on. You just you want to talk to me? It's smart. Am I a real person? No, I didn't think so. Oh, well. All right, are we ready? Okay, what is my exponential equation for a five to the third equals 125? Good job. All right, B, 625 to the one four equals five. C, perfect. And D, just ignore that. Ignore that. Just ignore that. You know, it got real weird right there. All right. So we now are confident going both ways, correct? Yeah. All right. Now we're going to get to answering. Okay. So now we're going to get to answering log questions. We're going to start off with common log. That's because everything is in terms of multiples of 10, right? So let's just really quick do our multiples of 10 out loud. Are we ready? What is 10 to the zero? zero. One. one. 10 to the zero is one. New one's gonna, yeah, yeah. All right, 10 to the one. 10 to the two. 10 to the three. 10 to the four. 10 to the five. 10 to the six. So we remember when we're multiplying by tens, that means you're adding zeros on, right? Your place value is a shuffling. Your numbers are getting larger. Yes? Okay. That's how tens work. Got it? All right. So let's see if we can apply that logic here. So up first, we have log of 100. Again, these are all common log, which means your base equals 10. Common log means your base equals 10. So you're asking yourself 10 to what power equals 100? So x equals two. My power is going to be two. That's what that's asking you. So log of 100 is asking you 
10 to what power equals 100? Yes? Are we okay? All right, here we go. Next. And if you don't want to use X, you can use P. Some people use P in their notes for power. Um, but I just use X as a no. Here we go. So now, again, my base is 10. I'm asking myself 10 to what power equals 10 to the 1 half. Why did I write 1 half? 1 half power is the same thing as square root. If I'm taking the square root of something, I'm taking the half power of it. Okay, so obviously, what is x? One half. Okay. Still with me? All right, so this is asking you 10 to what power equals 1,000 to the negative 1? Negative 3 power. And why is that? There we go. And why did I make it 1,000 to the negative 1? Because it's a fraction. To relieve a fraction, you turn it into a negative. Do you remember that rule? All right. So we know x equals negative 3. It is the same thing as saying x. Uh, No, 1 third is the cube root. We're not taking the cube root of it. Okay. So if I have 10 to the negative 3, that means that I have 1 over 10 to the third, which equals 1 over 1,000. All right. Now, here, this one is saying you have log base 6, 6. And it's asking a question. What does this equal? You don't want to take a sap? What's a base to the same? Let's go back to our rule. Because if I have log, if my log base and my argument are the same, what do they equal? One. If my log base and the argument are the same, it's going to always be one. So this comes out to be 10 because it's 10 to the 1, which just equals 10. Because log base 6 of 6 equals 1. Okay, If the base of the log and the argument are the same, it equals 1. All right, cool. All right, questions about common law and converting between? Yes, there is. Um, math, and it should be like log with a little x. Yeah, we're also going to learn how to do it without using that feature. Yes, we're going to go over it. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. All right, here we go. Calculator. So moving on to the calculator, uh, we're going to um, talk about calculator input. So at this time, I would like for you each to find log 34.5, log of 4,300, and log of, yes, there's a log button. <laughs> where were you last year? Where were you last? Annabeth asked, where was the button to change your base? It's gonna really keep making me select my ROM. I don't know why. I lost it too. All right. So just um just regular log. I don't know. Just don't get comfortable with Desmos because you'll be able to use it on the test or the quiz. Okay. You cannot. Log. Anyone wants to guess why we get a negative error? Yeah. You can't have a negative argument. Okay? And that's because we have an asymptote. It'll be not possible. No solution. Undefined. All right. So just making sure log button's right underneath the square button. All you're simply doing is doing log of 
34 and a half, hitting enter, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, we got our answer, okay? Um, I am in a Facebook AP pre-cal group, yeah, for teachers, and um, we've been talking, and it seems that they want you to round to four decimal places, so we're going to work on rounding to four decimal places, okay? I thought so, too, but according to the group, we're at four decimal places, so we have one and five thousand three hundred seventy-eight. 10,000. Okay, and log of 43, 4,300 should have been negative 0, 0,3665. Yes. And then what happened when you did log of negative 3? Error, 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 error. There's no solution. And that's because it's not possible. We're going to explain why. So when we are talking here, we're going to write logs are not define when x is less than zero. Well, less than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Yep, logs are not defined when x is less than or equal to zero. And the reason being is, anyone want to take a stab and remember why? Anyone remembers why they're not defined? There's an asymptote. There is a vertical asymptote. I don't know why I did that. At x equal zero. Okay. All right. So with exponentials, you have horizontal asymptotes, right? Remember, logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. And so instead of having a horizontal asymptote, you now have a vertical asymptote. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. Is some of this in our brains? Okay. Okay. I was like, is some of this in here? All right. So we're going to talk about change of base. So option one here is um, if your calculator has the feature where you can input your own base, it's fairly easy. So to be able to put in our own base, we go math. And you're going to go, you got to scroll or go up. I guess going up is faster. Um, but it's math A, where it says log base. So it'll say log base, and you're going to click on that, and now it allows you to put in whatever base you need. So if I need 2, 32, bam, I got it. Okay, but I will tell you, on an example like this, log base 2 of 32, this would be on the non-calculator part. Okay, the reason why it would be on the non-calculator part is because it's asking you to to what power equals 32? And because that is something you can do literally by counting on your hands, they would expect you to be able to say that x equals five by doing two times two is four. Two times four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. How many hands did it take me to get to 32? Fingers, five, okay? Um, so they would expect, so these are ones that you can check with the calculator, but you should be able to do without using a calculator. Notice how I emphasize that here, without using a calculator. So this is asking me seven to what power equals 49? Seven to what power? Two. Seven to what power equals? I'll write it backwards. It's 49. I realized it. It's a half. Your teacher wrote it upside down. You know, just making sure you're paying attention. Okay. Um, 49 to what power equals seven? What's the relationship? One half. It's the square root, right? And how do we write a square root as a power? One half. So remember, this means square root. Yes, you're supposed to write one half. All right. So if we have log base of 164. It's asking you, 164, I'm going to rewrite this as 64 to the negative 1, right, equals what? 4 to something, right? I wrote that backwards. Sorry. 4 to the 1. So I don't know what it is. Okay, there's a couple ways of doing it. So you can break down 64 in terms of 4. So we know that um, four, 
four times one, four times one is, four to the one is four, four to the two is 16, 16 times four is six, 64. So four to the what? Four to the third. So we know that this equals four, negative one to the third, which means X is just what? Negative three. Did I write it back? Sorry. Y'all are right. Miss, Miss Jones is going the other way. Yeah. I have the big number and I need to find the little number. So it's going to be a third, just like happened here. Arr, wake up, Jones. I said me. No, these would probably be the non without a calculator. Yeah, it was me. I wrote it all wrong and weird. It's what? One over 64. So I rewrote it. Let me try it again. So one over 64 to the X is what we're asking equals four to the one, right? So I can rewrite one over 64 as four to the negative three. When you're rewriting it, once you rewrite it, all you're asking yourself is, what does X have to be for those powers to equal each other? Yeah. Because a negative has a negative would make. So when you have two to the third as a, as a power, is what you're asking? No, I think I would have to see what your what your point of confusion is, like written it out. So if you show me an example, we can work it work through that. All right, on the last one. So we have five to what power equals negative 25. And why is that? There we go. You didn't get caught. Good job. All right, so the next one are examples of when you would need to use a calculator. And notice how, what did I write? Use your calculator. And what are we rounding to? Four decimal places, okay? So using your calculator, how do we use it in the calculator? We gotta go to math what? Math A. Alpha A, if you want alpha, that's an A. Alpha A, or scroll up, however you wanna do it. Alpha, and then go to A, okay? The other way that you can do it is by, without having to go there, you would type in log of 15 divided by log of three. If you don't wanna do math. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm t I can't say I didn't tell you, no. That, that's why I'm showing you both ways. So with most calculators, you just do log 58 divided by log of four. Here we have log of eight and four tenths divided by log and of 3,500. And log of 125 divided by log five halves, okay? Are we comfortable with both methods? Math alpha A or math scroll up to A or writing it as a log divided by a log. This also is very useful if you're doing it on your phone because on your phone, you can't change the base, but you can do a log divided by a log. Yes. Which one? Okay, so after you did your evaluation, Again, whether you're using math alpha A or log 15 over log three, regardless of what you're typing in, I will model both. Let me open up my handy dandy calculator. So here's Sylvie. So if I go math alpha A 
it's going to show me this. And I would just type in what I have. So I would type in log base 3 of 15, hit enter. If I don't want to do that, then I would just do log 15 divided by log 3, hit enter. And notice they both produce the same um, results. So it's totally up to you. And again, remember, if you're not strong at rounding, you can go to mode. And since we're rounding four decimal places, I would go to mode, go to four decimal places. And when I go, if I hit enter again, it'll round it. Did I not switch it? I did not, guys. I went over there and didn't press enter. Enter. Let's try that again. Press enter. And it'll round it for me. So notice how it does include the zero. So if you didn't put the zero when you round, please make sure you include it. So we're going to say approximately 2 and 4,650 ten thousands. Okay. Or I'm going to go ahead, since we modeled both, we're going to go ahead and write out the answers for the remaining. So you should have had 2 and 9,290 thousandths approximately negative two and 272 ten thousandths. And then last but not least, you should have ended up with five, sorry, my pen in its weirdness, and 2,694 ten thousandths, okay? If you have questions, let me know, but that's where we are. All right. So next we're gonna talk about orders of magnitude. Um, so for orders of magnitude, we're going to use a calculator to kind of model it out. But basically, we're going to be looking at the powers and how that's affected um, along the way. So up first, we have log 3 times 10, comma, log 3 times 10 squared, um, comma, log 3 times 10 to the 10. And we want to look and see how is that changing. And we're going to write it in order of increase. Well, we're going to see if it's an order of increase. So, two. Go to my calculator. And now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to write it as, instead of me having to do it over and over, I'm going to write this as a log equation, a function. And I know that it's log three, but it's log three x. So my x is what's changing, right? Is log 3 times something. Um, you can write it as that, or you can write it as log times 10 to the x, because you are analyzing what happens as the power of 10 increases, right? And so that's what we're going to be looking at. Log times 10 to the x. How is that changing? What are my results? So I have that. I'm now going to go look at my table. And we start off with 10 to the 1. So with 10 to the 1, we have 1 and 4,771 ten thousandths. Then we have 2 and 4,771 thousandths. Then we have 3 and 4,771 ten thousandths. And we kind of get what's happening, right? dot, 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 all up to 10, where we end up with 10 and 477,000, okay? So as you can see here, when we have a common, a common factor in our argument and a common base in our argument, there is going to be some type of order, some type of pattern that's following. So here, notice that our, pa our pattern in our integer parts are simply one, two, three, and we keep going all the way to 10. And then the pattern in our decimal, the pattern in our decimal came out to be zero, four, seven, seven, one, roughly. All right, then it says how many orders of magnitude greater is three times 10 to the 10, then three times 10 to the one, okay? So what you're doing is, because the factors are the same, 
all you're doing is asking yourself, what is 10 to the 10 minus 10 to the one? But you're just focused on the magnitude, which is just focusing on the powers. So you're just asking yourself, 10 minus one equals nine. So this is my order of magnitude. That's how many, um, how many, how much greater it is from one to the other. And that's it. Um, so analyzing the pattern, talk about the pattern, identifying what comes next, and summarizing it. Okay. Now we're here on providing an example of when you would be using um, this type of information. So it says here, the, uh, we're gonna talk about the Richter scale. Richter scales are important when you are measuring earthquakes, uh, measure on a seismograph, and they can be compared with the following formula. So our formula that we're given, that's scientists use, is gonna be log of level one divided by level two equals magnitude of one minus magnitude of two, okay? Uh, on the Richter scale. So we're given the example, how many times more severe was the 2001 earthquake in Gurhat, India, which had a magnitude of seven and nine tenths than the um, 1999 earthquake in Athens, Greece, which had a magnitude of five and nine tenths, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna follow what it says here. So we have our mag M1 or M2. So M1 minus M2 is what we're starting off with. And then we're gonna use log of our level of intensity of one divided by intensity of two, okay? So M1 is gonna be seven and nine tenths minus five and nine tenths equals the log of I1 over I2. So that gives us this equals two, equals two, 7.9 7 minus 5.9. And now we know that this is two, so we have we're going to write this as a log. So remember, this is a common log. That means the base of two. So we know 10 to the second power, sorry, equals I1 divided by I2. Well, 10 to the second power equals 100. So what does this mean? It means that the earthquake, earthquake in India is 100 times greater than the Greek earthquake. Earthquake. With an order of magnitude of, order of magnitude And again, that's just the power of two. All right, so that's how applying the magnitude to a situation and applying the log rules um, to a real world problem, especially if you study earthquakes and other natural disasters, which I did in college. Uh, why? Because it gave me a physics credit. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna talk about the pH scale. So chemical reactions. Uh, the pH equals negative log H plus is a scale that measures how acidic or basic a substance ranks. The scale ranges from zero to 14, where seven represents neutral. Um, and each whole pH value below seven is 10 times more acidic than the next higher value. So starting off here, we have balsamic vinegar has a pH of two and four tenths, 2.4. And a box of baking soda has a pH of 8.48 and 4 tenths. What are the hydrogen ion concentrations? So using the formula that we're given, we're going to set up and solve. So we're looking for the hydri hydrogen ion concentration. So we're going to first do, let's do vinegar first. So we're going to do the vinegar, the balsamic. 
And we know that the pH is 2.4 equals negative log of H plus. Okay, so in order to solve this, again, our base is 10. So we're looking at 10 to the 2.4 equals our H plus. Okay, and we'll plug that in in a second. And then now we're going to do baking soda. So we're going to do baking soda, baking soda. Um, and it has a pH of 8 and 4 tenths. So 8 and 4 tenths equals negative log of hydrogen. And again, our base here is 10. So when I rewrite this, it becomes 10 to the 8.4 equals H plus. Sorry, I forgot my negatives. Negative. Negative. My log is negative, so the power is going to be negative. All right, and I'm going to put these in the calculator to figure out what are the hydrogen ion concentrations. So I open my handy dandy calculator. First up, clear this out. We have 10 to the negative, negative 2 and 4 tenths. I did not even type the two. Two and four tenths. And we end up with uh, 40 thousandths. Because this is chemistry, um, we're going to go ahead and go back to float. The reason why we're going to go to float is so that we can use scientific notation to round it off is we're going to use the right format, the same format that you would use in chemistry. So I'm going to hit enter again, and I get here to write this in scientific notation. Remember, that means I am counting how many decimal places it takes me to have a significant digit. One, two, three. So we're at three, three, and nine, eight, one, two. I don't know how to write this in chemistry, but I know if we're working on four digits, four digits I'm going to leave it like that. And it's going to be times 10 to the negative third. And my units for this are is it, um, moles per liter. I think that's how it's written. Any chemistry people in here? You know, we're taking chemistry. Did I write that correct? In moil over liters for pH and acidic. No, oh, we haven't did that yet. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna assume that I wrote that right. It feels right from the very little I remember of chemistry. Um so eight and four tenths. We're gonna do it again. Notice here that the calculator's like, oh I got you, boo. And it wrote it for me. So we have for this one, for um uh, for the sodium, we're at three and ninety-eight one two. But this time, times 10 to the negative 9. It actually gave me my scientific notation power. So what does this mean? Well, it says, how many times greater is hydrogen ion concentration of the, vi of the vinegar than it is of baking soda? So we're looking for the orders of magnitude. So when I have orders of magnitude, I'm doing vinegar divided by the soda, the baking soda. So we have 10. Again, we're only focusing on the powers because notice that your, your factors are the same. So we have 10, I mean the powers of our original, I'm sorry. You technically I can do either one, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. Anyways, we're gonna do the originals. So 10 to the negative two and four tenths divided by 10 to the negative eight and four tenths. That's gonna give us Remember, when you have powers, you subtract them. So negative 2 and 4 tenths minus negative 8 and 4 tenths leaves you with 10 to the 6 tenths. So what does that mean? It means that vinegar is 6 orders of magnitude, magnitude greater than baking soda. And baking soda. Okay. And yeah, that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. 
or 2C.1. Thank you for participating.